Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. It's time for our weekly recap of the Gibson Demo Shop. As an active participator this week, there were a handful of really cool guitars and a few just basic models that were decent deals for people. But we need to start from about this area and cover all the way up to here. Let's start with the top dogs this time. And perhaps the most controversial lies right here. I cannot believe this that Gibson would actually have one of these things. If you're in the know about collectible Gibsons from the 90s, you know exactly what this is. But if you're not, you might just think, huh, is this like some 2014 weird modern production flying V that they just refinished gold, bedazzled out, and now they want $8,000 for it? No, this is actually a really, really rare guitar. Okay, so the reason why they want $7,899 is not because they've modified this. It does say modified, but that's because they've modified other parts. We've talked about this on the show before. This is part of the Centennial Collection of Gibson. In 1994, it was the 100th anniversary of the entire company from its very beginning, and every month they did a limited edition of one of these. They made 100 of each of them, and some of them were more popular than others. The Flying V, I was just telling you guys, it's one of the least popular ones. Bam! Gibson has a new old stock one from 1994. That opens a whole new can of worms, because let's think about this for a second. Gibson is currently in the Nashville plant, producing most of this stuff. Gibson first started in the Nashville plant around 1975. So if they have something from 1994, I think that could potentially mean they could have things all the way back from the 70s that were just thrown to the back, they forgot about them, and they're going to bring them out through the demo shop. I don't know any of that for sure, but this came from the year 1994. That is the oldest guitar we've seen from the demo shop yet. So who knows what they have in this backlog archive. Now you can see this one was definitely priced very optimistically. Like some of this collection can still sell for that much, but generally these flying Vs, I mean, Reverb estimates them between four and a half to five and a half, simply because Yes, they were limited edition. Yes, they were $10,000 brand new. They do have a real diamond in the headstock. They've got a fancy medallion on the back. But the truth of the matter is, they took everything special <laughs> off of this guitar almost. And they're still looking for a very top dollar. So the first thing that I found incredibly offensive here is look at our tailpiece. These initially shipped with a special tailpiece that was essentially like a serial number for the guitar. Like this one, it says 1968. This went up from the first year of Gibson, 1894, all the way until the current production of 1994. So losing that is a big deal. Like no collector's gonna want it now. And on top of that, they also swapped out the pickups. Now, thankfully, they left the knobs alone because the knobs are a little bit special. They're also golden, but they have a tendency to, you know, wear off. But everything else seems about right. It does have some finish checking. And I mean, this thing was probably returned and they just never did anything with it because it had like a ding or something. It's either that or did they have to take this guitar back under warranty for some reason? It could just be like a one-off type deal, but I doubt it. But what is nice is right here, you can see the original pickups. They look like they've got some like mold going on, like some oxidation along the edges. So maybe this was just stored in the case forever and then all the parts started to go bad. So it appears this stuff is included. I'm curious if that has the tailpiece in it or not. It might, it just very well might. And then everything I just said, completely moot point because you could restore it if you wanted to. However, reading through this description, I don't see what they're saying is included and isn't. But at the end of the day, I think this is going to be one of the tougher sells on the Gibson demo shop because this is a collectible model. If it's not in perfect shape, most collectors are going to pass on it. So I see a price cut in the future on this one. But hey, I could be wrong. There might be somebody that might think this is fancy and buy it. I was scared somebody was going to think that it was a limited edition custom shop type thing and they refinished this and they fell in love with it and they would buy it and then later realize what it actually was. I actually had a comment from somebody thinking it was like a, a 2014 that was just refinished in gold and they went three times market value plus. 
no, that's not quite what it is. But at the same time, Gibson is just pricing this in accordance to what the next one for sale is. But a little bit higher because, hey, they're Gibson. You want to buy it from the original guys, you get a warranty. But here is what it initially looked like from the factory. This particular one is serialized 1956. So a little more than halfway through the run, if my quick math is correct. But here you can see like the knobs that have the diamonds. I mean, we've talked about these enough on the show now. That was the biggest mind blow of the entire week, and that was just on Tuesday. But they also had another really cool one on Tuesday that unfortunately this darn thing blinded me. I was just so stricken that they had a 1994 Flying V Centennial that I completely missed this thing. I had the opportunity to get it, but this is one of those uh, Japanese exclusive ones done up in what they're calling Burnout Blue. Whoever got this, that's a cool guitar because it's got the more rounded 70s style headstock. It's a nice striking blue, kind of like a hot rod color. I think they could have got away with some like silver pinstriping on this thing. But I love the fact that this particular model, it's got that 70s headstock. It's got the volute. It works well with that finish. And it was a great value. $16.99. There was almost no premium put onto that. But this particular guitar came from 2015. So this is one, I think they actually priced it a bit too low. I bet they could have easily got 2000 for it and it still would have sold in seconds. Other than that on Tuesday, I mean, there wasn't much. I mean, there's a 50 standard, a classic HP, just your usual custom shop in USA offerings. They had a couple of fancy blue guitars that looked pretty nice as well as a 275 and some 60s tributes. But then Thursday rolled around. The first custom finish of that one was this. One of those special tributes, and I mean, brand new, these are a thousand bucks, so paying a $600 premium, it still seems to sell them. But, oh, is that what I think it is? Are those new old stock BFG knobs? <laughs> if so, that takes us back to what, the early 2000s? They might not be that, but they almost look like it. But it's a beautiful blue finish. It's got the blue pickup rings that they've been using all the time on a whole bunch of stuff. In my opinion, it's not worth the premium, especially since it's only a body refinish and not the neck. This one ended up taking a couple of days to sell, but somebody did end up picking it up between now and then when I'm recording it here. I guess the other feature that made this one nice is it did have a flamed maple neck. I mean, not heavily flamed, but you can definitely see there's some figuring within that neck. But next up, the crown jewel of the week. So people were freaking out about this guitar over on Instagram. It was posted on June 27th. It normally takes about a week or two for these Instagram teased guitars to end up making it to the shop. And I was pretty darn sure we were going to see it this time, and it did indeed happen. This one, not as expensive as I thought, only $4,599. And guess how long it took for this thing to sell? Literally five seconds. I was on this page. I saw it as soon as it was listed. I actually had somebody reach out to me. They almost commissioned me to like be a paid hunter to get it, but then they decided since they didn't know the exact specs, if they would actually wanted it, that, that they just decided not to do it. I mean, it's not even guaranteed that I could have got it, but I was here in time. I could have picked it up if I had wanted it, but I decided to quickly scroll through these photos here, and I'm kind of glad that I did. Otherwise, I probably would have been a bit sad because I'm a stickler for the headstock. If there's anything majorly wrong with the headstock, I don't want it. And this one has a big, giant lacquer chip in it. It's uh, That would have ruined the entire guitar for me. I mean, like a Nick Ding, whatever that is on the back of the body, I could care less about that. But that right there by your custom emblem, I'm glad I held off. Maybe this is just one of those finishes that looks better in lighting like this. It's a beautiful emerald jade green, but they kind of let me down on the back of this one. It was a top only refinish, kind of like the one I had purchased last week with the sparkle silver burst. But this one overall, it's nice. I mean, black and green are my favorite colors, but even then, it just wasn't quite the example for me. But then again, nobody really even had an opportunity to buy this thing. I'm sure we'll see it get flipped because 4599 was fair given that it was from the demo shop and it had that big ding on the headstock. I thought for sure it was going to be the 5499 or whatever I paid for that silver burst. And in preparing for this video, pff, apparently I missed a seven string again. I, I never saw this get listed. 
ever. It just somehow popped up in this whole place. Are we sure? Yeah, that was, it was just, okay. I just missed it, which is unfortunate. One of these days, I will snag one of the seven strings off of here because I haven't done a proper review of a Gibson seven string before. I mean, I've had them, but not a Les Paul version. And this is just quite the interesting monstrosity. And generally, these are very fairly priced. $18.99, I see no problem why this would not be a $2,500 example. Now granted, it's not as nice as that last one that had the flame top, so I'm not that sad that I missed it. I would rather have a, a fancy looking one, but I guess the all blacked out vibe does go with this style of guitar a bit better. But it seems like Thursday had a bunch of good sellers. It seemed a lot of the stuff sat this week except for Thursday's offerings. Because currently, at the time of recording, there's only like, what, four guitars left from the Thursday update? And a whole bunch of them from Tuesday. But in the interest of keeping things short and sweet and to the point, I will let you check out the rest of the demo shop offerings here as I scroll past them for this week. Overall, it was an okay week, nothing too crazy, except for that V and hopes of the future of what might come out of the demo shop. What beasts are Gibson caging? I think only time will tell on that. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.